time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back. Another show, the last last show show. of 2016. The last show of 2016, when people are listening to this, it'll be 2017. 17, yeah. But it's not the first show of 2017, but it's the last show of 2016. Because we chose to record early. We did, because we we want to enjoy the New Year's. Yeah, I want to watch some football. Oh, dude, you know what? I tell you what, it has been, because I have the week off, Mm -hmm. and they finally got... How to put the bowl games correctly in order from noon to midnight. Okay, so you you got a a, a, a like plethora of football to watch every day. Yeah, boom, 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 pretty much every day. I think except okay one day it was, but it was like noon and watch the football. Okay, go away, do something, come back. Oh, next football game. Now that's TV. Right on. But uh, it is the last show of two sixteen, and uh, kind of sad to see it go. I am, but I'm not. Uh, you, you know, know what though. I, I think there's a whole bunch of other people that are sad to see it go because uh, this has been a rough year on our entertainment. Yeah, it just continually, day by day, they keep snagging people, man. If you're not a musician who we lost, we lost actors and actresses. Right. And it's like, wow, maybe we should get out of 2016. Right, yeah, it's it's like chewing people up left and right. It is, and uh, you know, and... You know, it, 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 unless you've been under a rock, mm-hmm. uh, Carrie Fisher, and then the mom dies 24 hours later. Yeah, yeah. Debbie do, Reynolds. Do, yeah. Do, do you think that's... Let me ask you this. Do you think that is just coincidence or... No. You don't... Okay. No. Cause, well, you see that with older people, you know. I mean, I, I've actually, we've got... Uh, my, my wife uh, has close family friends from when she was a child. That I can't remember which one. I think it was the the wife died first, and then hours later the dad isn't that died, wild or the husband died. Yeah, it is wild. So man. it happens. It ha- I think yeah. You know, I don't know. I think there's there's some divine intervention there at some point. Pretty that, amazing, that, isn't it? You know, it's like okay, you you you've done well, son. It's time to come out of home. Exactly, you know? and then you know, and it, as things is dying as uh, we go here, um, the, our seasons are dying. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, we're gonna here in Michigan. Uh, Bow hunting is going to be ending uh, on Sunday and late doe season. Late doe season. Um, Had some more doe killed at our camp. Did you? Yeah, this last week I think there was two. Yeah, two, maybe three. Can't remember. I think it was two. Yeah. What? Uh, I know you had a magic number to hit. We got pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. You, you pretty close to that number. Yeah, we're about. I think we're three or four away. Okay. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, I think it was pretty successful. You know, had I had the opportunity to go up during this holiday. I know we'd have got a lot closer, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, but. exactly. And you know, that's the thing. Uh, we we talked about, hey, let's you know see if we can get out on the hard water. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been warm pretty much all week. Right on. I, when I left here last show, I drove by the lake. Okay. Yeah, it was a it was a nice water on top of the ice. On top of the ice, yeah. and there was there was nobody in the in the cut fishing. Yeah. So okay. There, there was no cars, no nothing. I'm like, man, we ain't doing that. I tell you no. that, right? No. You no, know, no, even no. though. I am getting you to your preferred weight to leave me out on the ice. That's, yeah, thanks. I yeah, appreciate that. Exactly. Yeah, he brought donuts over again this morning, folks. Not he, donuts, just one. Well, there was one for you, one for me. Right. You know, and it's just, you know, we're we're finishing up another year of hunting, and uh, it's just amazing how that works. And I just finished another glass of coffee. Great. A cup of coffee, so. So you'll be, you'll be rocking in style here soon, but. Yeah, uh, I'm amped. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff to talk about on the show. We do. Um. Surprisingly, we we got something from Donnie Vincent that I want to read later on, talking about uh, our relationship to the outdoors and how that relates to your and my 2016 seasons. Um, what else are we going to talk about today? Well, I paid a visit to you at work yesterday because you helped me out and yeah, you gave a uh, a tour to my daughter mm-hmm. who's thinking about everything to going into, just not knowing what. Right. Um, I was kind of it kind of hit me and it kind of made me laugh that. Even at the, the TV station, mm-hmm. you guys are watching the Eagles. Yeah, you notice that, huh? I I I, I turned it. <laughs> I if you've been I, living under a rock, he's talking about the, this Eagle Cam. Well, it started I think a couple of days ago on one of the major networks. CNN's where I saw it. Is at. that where it started? I don't know where it started. Who started it first? 
but uh, it was NBC that I caught it on, and they're, they were staring at the, well, I, you know, it was in the morning, I flipped it out, and they're looking, is there, is there a, is the eggs hatched yet? I'm like, what? And they show this eagle, I'm like, oh, okay, they're watching an eagle cam. Right. Well, then, here I go, go to this TV station in Flint, and on their monitors is this eagle. I'm like, really? Yep. And speaking of, look at here, on our homepage, that's either Harriet or M15. Ah! How do you get the name M15? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Well, truthfully, I think it has a reference. Because there's um, the Decora Eagles that you'll catch up in March, I think, is when they start. They do the same thing. They all got numbers. A letter and a number. I think M15 is a good... I don't see a machine gun, but... No, I'd say M16. I think that'd be a better name for the dad. Maybe that'll be the next one. You know? I don't know. But one one is called Harriet. That's, I don't know. Yeah, we're looking at it. we got it full screen right now on our monitor. That, that, I don't know which one, if that's Harriet or M15. Really? Right. So, but, yeah, talking about the opposite ends of the spectrum. But, yeah, this Pritchett cam, Pritchett, it's Pritchett, Dick Pritchett Real Estate. This is the guy who has this camera. It's his camera. How he got this camera up, it's in Fort Myers, Florida, on an eagle nest. And this camera's been in place for 12 years. And I don't know if they still sponsor. Maybe it's sponsorship. Maybe that's the way it works. But it's on his webpage. That could be. You know, maybe he's got the exclusive rights to be able to put this up on his, his I, page. Because I know... You know? Well, it's uh, not exclusive. We got it on ours. I know I know. it's it's, it's kind of neat to see this because they um, how they have to get up there and do this and, you mm-hmm. know, they don't disturb the nest and don't... They get this camera into place. This one has been in place for 12 years? No, since 2012. Oh, since 2012. Four, uh, okay. four years. Four Almost years. five now. It is pretty amazing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's kind of neat to watch uh, our national bird... Uh, you know, and that, that's that's the part that intrigues me. It, it's, I mean, if you look, like, I don't know if it was YouTube or Facebook. I, I was sitting, like, last night when I come home, it was on my mind again. And it's like, people were commenting on Facebook about it. So I flipped over to the camera, and I'm watching the comments. And there's a drinking game that was developed off of this camera now. <laughs> it's like when people say a certain word because they ask the same question over and over and over and over again, somebody go, drink. You know, and then you're supposed to take a drink. <laughs> so, I, I think I think it's uh, funny because it's just amazing that you sit here and we watch a bird. But the best part is when the when the chicks get a little older, you'll see them bring the food to the the chicks, right? Right. Well, the ones in Decorah, mm-hmm. Iowa, brought a cat. Nice as food. Nice. And the up the uproar was just. Oh, it was, it was... Did they show the cat getting eat? Well, yeah, it was live on camera. Like you were seeing now, okay, all okay. of a sudden, whichever eagle it was, brings it, brings so said cat into the nest, and they just... Tear it apart. Tear it apart. So it wasn't like somebody was monitoring the camera and just shut the camera Oh, no, down. no, no, no. It, they let it go. Nice. And, you know, you'd see fish, and you'd see this, and then all of a sudden it just, boom, a cat. Mother nature at work. <laughs> hey. It is what it, it is. It is what it is, and if yeah. the cat's out there, and, you know, that's what it is. And that's no small nest, either. No, that you know, and see now, now the outdoorsman in me has certain questions that I want answered or like to know. You know, uh, there's certain things that I have figured out, but like the camera, like you, you just seen this movement right there. That that's an orbital move. That camera is like panning. It, it, it's not so much a pan as the camera is moving itself. It's almost like it's on track and it orbits um, as it's looking down. Oh, see now it's going up. Yeah, now it does have the tilt and pan motion to it and the zoom in and the focus and all that, but there's almost an orbit but because it, it, it swung around to the other side, like kind of on the other side of the nest. I don't know how long, how far it can oh, move. Oh, like, like it can almost... Like a track. Almost like a track, almost 360? Yeah, yeah. At least that's the way it appeared. Wow, they... The, uh, the movement that's that it really, had. You know, that's really um, getting into getting their camera set up. It's, yeah. So, that is kind of cool. Yeah. I wonder... Now... Is I haven't I haven't watched this camera at all. So, but is there a zoom to this? Yes. Oh yeah. So they zoom right down to the egg. You can see the cracks because there's cracks in the egg now where it's trying to get out. So now, how far do you think this camera could be away from the nest? Uh, it could literally be ten, fifteen feet, maybe more. Because I just wondered with the movement of the camera, would it, obviously the birds must be okay with it by now. Yeah. I think yeah. if it's been in place for four years and it's got infrared on it as well, so you can see it at night. You can right. watch the birds sleep. You know, people are saying, oh, there's lights on the bird. And that was one of the things. Drink. <laughs> it, but, I mean, really, you see some of the stupid comments people make on here. You know, ask, I mean, and I guess people, it just really shows that some people really don't know about the outdoors. And that, that's the point I wanted to make about this, is that people are really, 
is we garner more technology and people become more uh, separated from the outdoors and they sit in their office or their, their comfort of their home and they sit on Facebook all day. People are getting dumb. They don't, they don't get out and observe. They don't get out and enjoy the outdoors and, and question things, you know, and, and they assume certain things because they, they see it on a webcam. Well, if we see it on the internet, it must be true, right? Exactly. Exactly. As a matter of fact, I saw an article on some website that said, um, Photoshop photos where you tricked, right? Yeah. Um, they showed a, uh, that an amazing cobra in India that had five heads. <laughs> okay. And it, it looked, it, basically it looked like a fan. Right. It looked like they just Photoshopped one and just yep. went in like a fan, you know. The other one was, uh, Putin uh-huh. riding a grizzly bear. Uh huh. Instead of a horse, right? And yeah, right. Well, it's on the internet, so it must be right. Exactly. True, right. So, but uh, you know, we have one of these nests around here, mm-hmm. uh, Lobdell Lake, I think. Mm-hmm. And actually, Deb has seen <laughs> the bird at work over at the school. Uh-huh. So, uh huh. So, oh, the bird works at the school. Yes, it uh, it dines there every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> but they have seen it in the tree there. And yeah, that's kind of cool. But yeah, it's, it's like. People, if you get out and see this in nature, yeah, you'd understand that that nest is not twenty like a robin's 20, nest. 24 by whatever your size your screen is. Yeah, it's right? it's like over six feet it's wide. Six feet. Yeah, yeah. You could literally go up there and lay down in it. Yeah, and uh, and it's solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but yeah, no, no, it, it's it is amazing when people get on there and they start asking questions, and you're like, really? Mm-hmm. But yeah, this. I don't know how many views this camera has. I know I peeked in one time on when I was flipping through Facebook, and there was like nineteen thousand watching it at one time. And yeah. Like, oh. And I, if I remember right, this website uh, that this thing is hosted on has four views. There's four different camera views of of, of this bird or nest, I should say. And I don't know exactly where they're positioned at because I've just been watching the one from above. It, it, you know, people like I say they're losing their minds over this stuff. You know, you get the the, the tree huggers and the fur babies and all that kind of stuff that are just going crazy. But, you know, the, as the outdoorsman, I'm looking at this, yeah, there's part of me that wants to see the, those eaglets come out of that egg just because I've never been able to see it before. It is neat. I watch the Decora eagles do mm-hmm. that. And it, it's and as we get through the months and you see them get bigger, they start. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you can go back, you can research because they'll name these two hatchlings. Yep. And then you can go back. And then, like, I know for the Decora eagles, uh, they'll show you and, and they'll track them. Okay. So I know, like, uh, one year, uh, both eaglets were both electrocuted. Okay. Mm. So wingspan touching across the wires uh, or something because some, they got a like over uh, they got a six foot or larger wingspan. When, yeah. When they're grown. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, if you guys are uh, so so interested in, in seeing this stuff, you know, we've got a link on our front page, upnorthjournal.com. Go, over, you know, click click the viewer and you can watch these eagles. You know, it's it's kind of cool. You know, it's something different. I wouldn't suggest sitting all day waiting for the things to hatch. But Unless you got nothing better to do. Yeah, but, you know, you can go over and click on it, keep an eye on it. See Tell you what, the, the weather it's been now, it hasn't been really cold. Probably be a good time to get out and do some rabbit hunting. It would be, yep. Yeah, or, uh, or or start scouting your local lakes and watching to see when that ice gets hard, that way you can get out in the hard water. Yeah, definitely start uh, scouting because right now it's kind of iffy to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, we're uh, bumping up on our first break here. Let's step outside, take our first break. We'll come back. we got more good stuff to wrap up 2016. We'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families Afield program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters afield are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesafield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield.
second segment of the show, our last show for 2016, which I just realized, you know what 2017 means? <laughs> We're another year older. You, Godfather, will be podcasting for 10 years. Absolutely. In April. Yes, sir. April will be, uh, and actually our 400th episode should be the first week of February. Yes. So 400. We remember we did 300? Yeah. It just wow. seemed like it was well, yesterday. If, it, if it's February, it'll be two years. Yeah. Well, roughly, yeah. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was February 14th ish of 2015. Yeah. Up at Cabela's. Up at Cabela's. Yeah, we did a two hour show up there. Yes, we did. But. We, uh, we got anything planned for this one? No. <laughs> you need to start thinking about it. <laughs> I was asked that question, and actually, Deb asked that. I said, we're thinking about it. Yeah. It's on the radar. But it's on the radar. Um, but yeah. In You're over 120. Years old? No, episodes in. I'm knee deep. Yeah, episode 276 is when you jumped on board. That's when we resurrected it from the, the ashes, so to speak. <laughs> Literally from yeah. the ashes and uh, cleared the smoke. And, yeah. Uh, actually, had to clear the smoke out of your equipment. Yeah, yeah. Literally, because you didn't know if it was going to be working. You had it refurbished or cleaned, I guess. And yep. Like, All right, let's see if this works. Yep, fired up, no pun intended, and uh, away we went. Yeah, from from the rental house back to the cabin, to the new cabin. and uh, Right on. But yeah, you posted something online that I thought garnered uh, some questions. Uh-oh. Uh, you posted a picture. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> something about if I had $1,000, if I if I could get one gun. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We had... Uh... We had some good discussion on our Up North Journal Facebook page. If you had $1,000 and you could buy one gun, and only one gun, what would it be? And so, why? so, well, let me hear it because I want to know what gun you want to buy. I've already got it. It's the one I, I bought last year. Your 7 millimeter? Yep, Browning 7 millimeter. Yeah, uh, X Bolt. Yep, nice. X Bolt, Browning nice. 7 millimeter, uh, Rim Mag. Um, why would why did I buy that one? I was looking for a long range flat shooting gun. You know, um, something, I'm looking for like a 300-yard gun, maybe 400-yard, and uh, did a little research on it, and that's what I came up with. Um, and I found out this year, at about 50 yards, it didn't, it it killed the deer. There's no doubt about it, it killed the deer, but the deer ran on me. Um, I think it was just, it, it's too big a gun to use at close range. Agreed. You know, it didn't I have time for, it didn't, you know, lose enough velocity to expand uh, when it hit the deer. It just cut, went. If you could yeah. find that bullet it, yeah. on the other side of the deer before yeah. it hit anything, yeah. you'd probably find that it didn't expand. Right. That's what I'm guessing. Sure. I, see, mine, see, okay, so I'm I'm a 308 kind of guy. Right. I Don't ask me why. I, my, my dad gave mm-hmm. me, you know, that's, I started with a 3030, mm-hmm. but I went to 308, and I, I've got a few 308s. All right. Um. Well, you know, I'm missing one that I want to get is a pump. Okay. I don't have a pump. What what brand? But uh, that one would be a Remington. I want okay. that Remington 7600, I think. is. Okay. I got the 7400 semi-auto. Right. I want the pump one. Okay. My dream would be to get matching serial numbers or matching ones that are right next to each other. That'd gotcha. Cool. But anyways, um, I think, and I don't have a Remington, but... And I'm not really that big into names of guns and stuff like that. But uh, to me, it would be a bolt action uh, right now, uh, a Remington bolt action. I don't have one. I've got a Weatherby that it was the first one. I It was the first bolt action I purchased at 18 years old. Gotcha. It was like, ah, I can buy a gun now. Right, right and, on. Uh, uh, I, I bought a Weatherby 308, and that gun is just, to me, that's lights out. That gun is just I haven't shot in a few years. I I got to get it back to the range. I, I broke it down. I took it all apart. I was going to have it dipped, but some things happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got to get that recited in and re, redone. But uh, yeah, anything in three hundred eight, probably a bolt action. The gotcha. brand name. Yeah. I I really don't know enough about all of them. You know, right. Remington, Browning. But well, that, that's the thing. You know, I noticed, and there was a lot of discussion on our page about it, and some guys went into great length of great detail of why. When it comes to firearms, you know, I, I, I'll look at a certain caliber and I look at my past experience of what I like, what I don't like, and I kind of gauge it off that. Or I'll gauge it off, you know, um, what I've read, on, you know, I hate to say it, but online, you know, right. f- feedback of what I get or people I've talked to in the industry, you know, what I'm looking for, looking, what am I looking to use it for. But I really like, really love the Ruger M77 platform, bolt action, 
I've got two guns in that, and and I would like to build a collection, you know, from small to large caliber. I've got rifles. I've got the M seventy seven ultralight three hundred eight. Three hundred eight. Okay. Yeah, that that one I bought for for Deb mm-hmm. as a birthday gift. Gotcha. And it was a, it's an ultralight. It's light, and and of course she killed a deer before I did with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for buying your wife a gun. Yeah. So, uh, but no, uh, agreed. That is a, a plus. Another thing I really like about uh, is where the safeties are. Yeah, I do. I like that thumb safety, that swivel safety on the side. But, but I, I like the simplicity of the gun. I like the fact that it's, it's. I won't say it's a bare bones, but it's, it's not what I call one of your fancy shiny guns. Right. Exactly. It's, and it's a workhorse. It's a workhorse. It's got the bolt. It's got the plate on the bottom. You kick it open and they just fall out. Yeah. It's not a magazine. Yep. Uh, because uh, I have lost a magazine in my other gun. Mm-hmm. I, I was carrying it and got well, back and. Well, actually, on, on the smaller plat- the smaller calibers, my uh, HMR seventeen and my uh, twenty two Hornet, there there is a magazine okay. cartridge in those right. that drops out. So um, yeah, the larger calibers I don't have, so I, I'm not. The three hundred eight is is a uh, you feed them and then you kick open the, the the plate falls and they just fall out. Okay, so the plate's actually the bottom of the of the um, right in front of the trigger the guard box, the yep. magazine hole. Yep, and it's got a if you want to say a, the the where the bullets lay on the plate mm-hmm. and that's got a spring under it. Right on. So uh, simplicity there. Right. Um, plus, I like that safety is on the thumb up on the, the back of the stock. Oh, it's a thumb safety. Yes. It, it's not the, the no, swivel not safety the, nope. from the back of the bolt. And I love that safety. Yeah. That's why I like Mossberg yeah. Yeah. So safeties. Uh, the Remingtons are underneath, which it's okay. I, I can mm-hmm. deal with that. Mm-hmm. But uh, as far as Ruger is, I have no complaints about it. Right on. I've heard. And then, like you said, reading things. Mm-hmm. Um, your uh, bird's making noise there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's audio with that. Yeah, I, I, I still got the bird up. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, he or she just called the eagle cam. Yeah, but um, it's funny when you read things because when I go and I do a, a product and I look at a product and I want to read the reviews, I kind of like take the top five and the bottom five, kind of throw those out and say, okay, what's in the meat of this right subject? Because you could say somebody, uh, hey, I like Ruger, and the next person will go, I can't stand shooting a Ruger. Right. Yep. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. I, I had that same conversation years ago when I bought my Mossberg. Why mm-hmm. do you want a trash gun like that? Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know those aren't you know those aren't machined. Those are stamped parts. That gun's going to be falling apart. And I'm like, hold on, wait a second, time out. I said, first of all, how many times am I going to shoot this gun in mm-hmm. reality? Mm-hmm. And I'm not a competitive shooter. I'm not uh, a, a every weekend skeet guy. I'm not, you know. So for me, it was like, okay. And to this day, I still have my Mossberg. Yeah, does it get, and, does and it get the job done? Does it get the job done? Does it every time I pull the trigger, it fire? Yep, it does. So it's like, um, oh, we get to look at the eggs. Yeah, Eagle Cam zooming in on the eggs there. Oh, oh, is that a crack in the egg? No, there's one in one of them, but... Boy, see, see what happens when you're watching online live cams. It, it grabs your interest. You yeah, just went right from talking about Mossberg shotguns to an eagle. Well, <laughs> it's right there in front of my face. But uh, yeah, no. Um, so that was kind of uh, when I read reviews. It's like, all right, th- that'll be like somebody telling you, you know, a Weatherby is is trash or, or, or a Browning is trash. What it's what. You know what? It's whatever Kool Aid you're drinking. Whatever you want to drink, and I can tell you the, the what what's good for me. Mm-hmm. The Mossbergs work, okay. Well, we see it in the archery industry too. Same thing. Oh, uh, it's, it, I think it's even. I don't know. It's probably and, even worse. And and it's worse in there because now I've learned is to watch who when when somebody says something about it, look at them and and, and kind of turn the page on them and look at the backstory. Mm-hmm. Kind of like um, a certain magazine came out with an edit edition. That seemed to be all, for the better part, and I'll say pro Matthews. Mm-hmm. It was like, well, this whole issue is mm-hmm. everything about Matthews. Right. Wait a minute. Right. So obviously they spent some serious cash. Right. For that month or whatever it was. Right. It was basically an advertisement for that. Right. And then and the next month you'll see it for another company. It, it and potentially another company. could be. Right. Yeah. Except, well, this whole, that's all fine and dandy, but give me Joe Schmo. And, and, let, and tell me about how how does it, and that's what one thing I like about when we go out to the stores and we do events, we get it from the people as to you know, hey, what's what do you like, right? So, but no, as far as guns and, and how that works, uh, 
if I had a thousand dollars, um, yeah, I could, I could definitely spend it. Um, I'd probably spend three, four, five hundred dollars on the gun and probably just as much on the optics. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I would, uh, if I had a thousand bucks, I, cause you could probably take a $250 rifle and put a $800 750 scope on it and be just as good. Yeah. Depending on, yeah. Depending on what you buy. Yeah. There, there's, there's some truth to that. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, it would be Browning, Browning or Ruger's is, is what I would buy. What caliber? Probably 270 because that's the one thing I don't have personally in, in my, uh, safe right now. Uh, my dad's got a couple, but as far as, as me, that's, that's probably the, the one caliber I haven't I, played with enough yet. If I go into the twos, either a 270, 280, mm-hmm. I think 270, uh, you've got a more uh, versatile range of getting ammo for it. Mm-hmm. Right on. Um, funny you say, we still talk about this, because I had this conversation with, when I was w- at work, when I was down south, um, about, because the guy that I was talking with who deer hunts, he's from uh, Gaylord originally. Mm-hmm. Grew up on a dairy farm up there, and, and and basically his style of hunting is stalking. Okay, but again, he's got the acreage to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were talking about that. I said, "Well, that's fine if you like to do that, but you got to be have enough." I can't do that. I right. can do it, and I'm going to either bump into my relatives or I'm going to walk into somebody else's land. Right, right. You know, but uh, his his gun is uh, a thirty two. Okay, you know, and oh, that's you know, that's the gun I grew up with. We used to. They used to go to the the so called their garbage dump and grab the bottles out of the garbage and throw them up in the air and shoot them and but right. that was his gun right you right know? Uh, it's kind of funny and relatives of mine who hunted moose use a thirty two as well okay to hunt moose now some people are like oh my that's not you know what it gets the job done mm-hmm. they kill a moose and that's what it is so it's kind of do you, do you have a uh, we talk about the seven mil you just got, but is there a, a gun that you have that is uh, special to, to to you? Like my first gun was a thirty thirty. Oh yeah, I've got one that that's that's dear, near and dear to my heart, and that's the first gun I ever purchased myself. That, that's kind of like me and my three hundred eight. The yeah, Weatherby. it was a it was a gun that I'd wanted and I'd done. Uh, I heard a lot about and done some research on, and it's caliber that I wanted. Okay, uh, it was my twenty two Hornet because it's a center fire twenty two. Yep. And uh, I, I specifically bought that gun to kill coyotes. You know, I mean, that's what I bought it for. So I could I could use that and take it out in the field and, and actually take it out and, you know, hunt other game with it as well. But the, right. But that's really what I got that for with, was for coyotes. Um, and, yeah, I love it. I, I'll, I don't ever see myself ever getting rid of that firearm. There you go. Something mm-hmm. I'll hand down, you know, to one of the kids or grandkids at some point in time. That's awesome. That just, uh, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. You put that up on uh, Facebook and I saw that and I saw some of the discussion and you, like you said, someone in just great detail as to buy and mm-hmm. somebody said, Hey, I'd, I'd buy three used guns and right. And well, that wasn't the question. Yeah. It's thousand dollars for one firearm. Yeah. What, would, what would you buy? What, exactly. what new gun would you buy? If I could, I would love to have one specifically made. That'd be kind of cool. custom made gun. Custom made. Right on. You know, if it, you know, give you that thousand dollars, we'll have it custom made. You know, we got a place here that'll do that. You know, here local uh, Williams Gun Sight and Outfitters here in 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 the Flint area, they do a lot of custom gun work, and we know a few of the boys over there. You gonna have them make me a gun? No. <laughs> if you pay for it, I'll have them yeah, make I one. Yeah. Well, that's what would you have them make? What caliber? That's a good question. Here I am. If you're asking me to get a custom gun made. Actually, you know what? Time out. I, I changed my whole mind on all this. The one gun I want, and it'd probably cost at least that much, probably a lot more than that, would be if I could find the Anschutz 22 Target Master rifle. I think it's Target Master 58 that I shot back in college when I was on the Eastern Michigan University rifle team. Really? Yes. Yeah. That's the gun I want. That's when when college when you could carry when, you, when college is not had, carry but when they had guns on campus right right, yep. right right wow that was a long time ago right um, yeah that was well back, that's interesting back in 1988 89 yeah when I shot wow maybe 90 a custom yeah. gun ooh I might even do a, a three way I might even if this is gonna be a custom gun see okay here's a problem I have with, with this though but if it's too nice of a gun I won't want to take it in the woods. Yeah, yeah. That that bugs me. Well, this gun you wouldn't take in the woods. It's definitely just for the range. There you go. You know, competition shooting. Yep, it's competition shooting. So, but no, it's just interesting. Um, 
what wow i'd like to have a custom gun that'd be awesome now you got me thinking <laughs> so i know somebody well we had him on the show andrew mm-hmm. who made he built a gun basically he customized it with everything he needs for his shooting at long range right and he's using 308 at 500 yards or whatever he was shooting a golf ball at 500 I think yeah we need to go up to his range one sometime and 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 do a little shooting that, <laughs> that's a reach out and touch yeah i'd like to say, i'd like to say that i've done that you know there you go for the I, shot i've taken it's been 200 yards he would be more than happy to take us up there he's uh he's at, offered it a few times maybe we need to do that this summer we uh, i can talk with him and uh we, we can arrange it all right well let's arrange taking this break right now we're bumping up uh on a long segment here so we're going to step outside we're going to take our next break we come back we'll wrap up 2016 in the last half of the show we'll be right back after this so what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that many states... It's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older. As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families of field. Back everybody, third segment of the show. Third segment of the show, we're heading down to the, we're winding down. 2000, 2016. When you're listening, it'll be 2017. That's right, a new year. Um, so what's going on? Oh man, I tell you, it's finishing things up, trying to get things finished. Um, uh, as you, We talked about the last segment, uh, about something you posted. Yeah? Uh, oh, news. A couple, ep- uh, a couple uh, episodes ago, we talked about the deer survey. I did get the invite to take the survey, so... Oh, you finally found it. No, it finally showed up. Oh, okay. For some reason, after you got yours. Yeah? So I, I got to go back in there, and I got to take the survey. Okay. So uh, I got so mine. Maybe they listened to you. Maybe. maybe they heard I, you whining. Probably. <laughs> so. Which reminds me, uh, because we're recording this on Friday, um, nobody's going to hear this, but uh, you've only got two days left to put in for the Pure Michigan hunt. Absolutely. You know? Do you so, put in for that? No, I don't. I don't either. But I thought about it because it was funny. I thought about it, and then I heard an advertisement for it on the way here. Yeah? Okay. It's real weird. It's almost like calling me to at least put in for it. Yeah. Maybe I could win something. You think? No, I don't win anything. You don't? Okay. No. All right. Um, but um, what's a trophy to you? Or, 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 or This was posted on Facebook. and um, Dude, that camera makes me look fat. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Put your narrow lens on that thing, man. Dang. I, <laughs> I just noticed that. I'm watching it here live monitoring it. It's like, wow. That or I put a lot of weight on here wow. lately. Um, <laughs> geez, uh, happy geez. New Year's, Jason. He just uh, chimed in here. I see you there, bud. You see, you see. Uh, it, I don't know if you saw Bob Rich's comment about not having an angry face in the meat. Yeah. Yeah, there's an angry face. That's right what there. I thought. It was kind of funny. He posted that. That's funny. You must have been angry. So you had a thought. I had a thought. Um, it was posted uh, online, uh-huh. and it was a, a person that shot a, it was late season doe, and um, obviously, because it was just posted last week, and it was posted, and the person had a shotgun. It was a button buck. The guy was smiling. He, he, he The person got a button buck, uh, late season doe, um, and he kind of got chastised for it. By okay, others was it public land, private land? Um, that I don't know. Okay, was it um, Michigan? Yes, southern Michigan because that's who's got the late doe season. Okay, um, and it just it occurred, I don't know, it, it, it struck me as to uh, hear this person and legally it was 
anything under three inches, right? That's the it's, dopamine. Yep, it's right? legal. Yep, it's legal. Right. So, mm -hmm. and he got chastised for posting it because it it wasn't following uh, the page's beliefs. I guess the page, the page that it was posted on. What page was that? Um, the let them go, let them grow. Oh, okay, okay. But legally, he did correctly. Yeah, if it's legal, I ain't got any problem with it. Uh, personally, on a personal note, yeah, you know where I stand on. That I know, I know where you stand. On it. It, it just, it, I don't know. It just, it just bugged me that here the the guy was smiling. Okay, it it might be the only deer he, deer he, he got all year. Yeah, I don't know the situation exactly, and, yeah. and we don't know the behind the story situation. Uh, maybe it was the only day he could get out hunting. Maybe it was, and here he's getting chest. Oh, you shouldn't post it on this page. Mm -hmm. uh, but in reality, folks, he legally did it. Right. I don't have a problem with anybody shooting a deer that's legal, as long as it's legal. Um, what I would like to see is I'd like to see the laws, some of the laws changed here in Michigan, uh, or game laws, I should say. And truthfully, uh, this, and truthfully, I, I don't know how far he shot it, and I don't know his eyesight, and but. It, you couldn't really tell. It was a you could tell really small nubs. Yeah, I mean, really, if the deer's walking away from you or at a distance, and it was a late doe season, right? Okay, we've we, talked about this yep. a, a gazillion. We times. had doe management hunt at our place. Yep, you know, um, when we took the kids up there, and they learned a valuable lesson. I thought because they're uh, you're you're hunting, you're a guest hunting at a place, mm -hmm. and you're ob abiding by their rules. Yep. That yeah. that yeah. I get. Yeah. But depending on you know it, really this guy's he looked happy to me. He didn't. He wasn't frowning. He wasn't crying. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, he was. He was happy. Yeah. He took a a, a button buck, uh, late season. I understand. I understand. It, it just it. Where do you stand on it? I mean, dude, he, you asked the question. He, he was totally legal. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the fact he shot a legal deer. It, I don't have a problem with that. I, I have a problem with, with with the way some of these laws are. The way things are set up, um, it is what it is. Our, you know, was it a mistake? I I don't know. We don't know. We don't it, know. It, 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 don't know. He did not say that. He said, "Hey, yeah. took a button buck yep. late season." Yeah. If if that's what he put in the freezer and it fell within the law, I you know there, who am I to question that? What I'm what I'm here to question is the way some of the laws are are uh, doled out on, on the hunting public and and that's where I think I kind of uh, uh, and that's where instead of knocking yeah. him, yeah, say, "Hey, bud, good job." Yeah. Personally, yeah. and I'm not going to throw that into the fray. Oh, I would have shot it, waited, or whatever. Right, right. It might be the only deer he's seen all year. Yeah, could be. Know. Could be. Um, me, hey, congratulate the guy. Yeah. He did it legally. Everything's within the boundaries of the law. Mm -hmm. Go after the law. Yep, yep. Change yeah. those. If, 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 if Instead of, uh, what's the word, um, the comments, not constructive criticism, the opposite. Um, criticizing people. Criticizing people mm -hmm. publicly because... It's easy. Um, yeah. It's really. It's easy to chastise behind a keyboard. Oh, uh, shoot! Yeah. You or can, a microphone. Or absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't go out there, uh, me personally wouldn't shot it. Right. But then again, I'm not in that gentleman's situation, right. and I'm not going to go on a forum and say, "Dude, you shouldn't post it." No, he was maybe maybe that's a learning thing for him. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think that's probably part of the biggest problem we have with um, these forums is people are able to to go and chastise people. You know, without you really knowing who's doing the chastising, and, and the fact that we're tearing down our own people, you know, I mean, you know, united we stand, divided we fall. Um, to and me, I, if it's if it's somebody I knew, I I I wouldn't I wouldn't chastise them in public. I wouldn't chastise them. Always like, you know, dude, did what happened? You know, did you not did you not have binoculars with you? How far was the shot? Did, or did you just not care? Or in, you know, or it could have been his twenty seventh button buck he's seen in. Yeah, he just got. I got to shoot something to fill my tag that I need right. food or right. whatever. You know, because right. like you said, when you're up there for doe management, yeah, and all of a sudden that's all you guys were seeing were button bucks. Right on. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's exactly like, what we had up at our place. You were a field deep in button bucks, and you're thinking to yourself, "I'm here to shoot a doe." Yep. And in my case, I was there to shoot a doe, but do you think I could see a doe? Right. No. Right. But it was it. But that's it. Just I guess for the new year. Is before you use that keyboard, stop and take a breath. Stop, think. think about it, and say, you know, congratulate the guy. Yeah. Don't publicly go out there and say, ah, oh, yeah, way to go, knucklehead, or whatever it might be. Right. Because I wouldn't want that. 
And that goes, and, and like you said, you can be really big mm-hmm. behind a keyboard. Just like uh-huh. the, the people that get really big, mm-hmm. like uh, the, the the teenager that shot the bear, she shot a bear up in the UP, yep. posted it, and then she's getting death threats Threat, to her, yeah. her family. Hope, you hope a bear attacks you, blah, blah, blah. I guess the other thing, too, on, uh, let's, let's, flip, let's look at the flip side of the coin, the person doing the posting. Before you post something, stop and think, too. Okay, is, is this... What am I looking for by posting this photo? Am, am I looking to, like, hey, look at me? Or am I looking to give information? Or am I looking to be funny? Or am I looking to cause controversy? That could be, too. You know, and in, you know, in all reality, most I, I think most hunters are excited when, you know, they get that adrenaline rush. Man, I just, I just made a great shot, and I got this kill. Whatever species it may be, you know, all the way from bow fishing to moose or grizzly bear. And, and and you take that photo and you post it, and all of a sudden things start rolling that you didn't even expect. That, that, okay, let, let's let's also flip it and say no, it wasn't a white-tailed deer, it was an elk. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a big elk. It was maybe I don't know, raghorn, a raghorn, a spike or something on the you, from what you comparably see people look at my yep. make a look at my and it was le- illegal. It, it was a buck. It was legal. Mm-hmm. It was everything. It just wasn't, you know, a 5x5 five five or a 6x6. Six six. Right. It was a 2x3, a 1x2 two two something. Um, but you're going to get your couple hundred pounds of meat. Right, right, yeah. But then again, you know, you can be awful big behind the keyboard. And, well, I wouldn't have shot that. Well, maybe yeah. that's the only bull elk he was able to see. Or maybe his only opportunity of anything he saw. You know, you exactly. Don't know. And, you don't know. And it's funny because I see a lot of people post about watching shows and stuff. And that's another thing, I, I, a pet peeve of mine. It's kind of when you do a show, kind of set up what you're, what, what you're after and why. Mm-hmm. Because to let a beautiful eight-point walk by and go, nah, I'm not going to shoot it. Right. Let something, yeah. Okay, tell us there's why. a reason why you're doing that. Right. Well, just like at our camp. Uh, when we did the doe management hunt with the kids from Indiana, you know, before we went into the field, we, we set everybody down. Look, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And this is what we're looking for. You know, and you explain all those things. You show them pictures. And we had people sitting with them to actually watch and help them get was, to that point as well. You know, guys. It was, guys. An ed- it was an educational moment. Yeah. And you had, and I can't think of his name. I want to say Tom. Uh, he said it was one of the hardest guide to guide somebody. It was one of the hardest. Things. Oh, it was Rick. Yeah, Rick. Yeah. Okay. Yep. He said that, and we had him on the show, and it was one of the the hardest weekends to actually do because he had to first see an animal, mm-hmm. then identify it, yeah, and then okay, yes make, or no, yeah, mm-hmm. make the decision, yes or no. And he said he spent so much time glassing at deer, and 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 when they did shoot one. Yep. That was the first thing I, please, 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 yeah. please. But it, it's just, I don't know. I just saw that post and I, I tried to, I wanted to show you the picture before we talked about it, but I seem not to be able to find it. Now. <laughs> right on. So I don't know if it was taken down or, or what, but yeah, I don't know. It just, come on people. Let's, uh, instead of, if, if we, if we go after the laws and change the laws, that, that's great. So be it. That we all follow the same rules. I got laws to follow in the UP. Yep. Um, that are different than ones I have to follow down here. And, you know, truthfully, if I get a combo tag, I am in APRs. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But if I don't, I can shoot anything. Right. Which kind of, you know, you know, it's like, oh, jeez. Yeah. And I end up getting the combo tag just to, to force myself into that. Right. But there might become a, a time where, because I think I'm going on three years now without a deer. Okay. It's like, I just might get a, a single tag. Right. Just so I can, because we're not seeing the bucks that we need to see. Right. And, it, and I can't tell you that we're getting better or worse, because I don't know what th- this winter is going to be like. Mm-hmm. You know, if we get a bad winter. Right. So far, it started off pretty good. So far, we're we're doing okay. We need to get through two more hard months here. Right. So, but, you know, it's just all those things. Let's go after, if we're going to do things, let's work together and get the laws changed. Yeah. Not. Don't criti- attack the person that's following the law. Go after the, go after the rules and regs. Right. So. And there's a there, there's also the the way to, to approach people too, mm-hmm. uh, in a public forum. Uh, a, a private message is always good. Exactly. Don't you know? Like I said, man, we're our worst, aren't we? Own enemy. You know, it's it. We shoot ourselves in the foot so many times um, because we think we're all that in a bag of chips. You know. I mean, yeah. I've learned a lot this year. Um, you know, I really have. I've learned a lot in the last three or four years. But who am I to sit here and, and try to chastise people for for shooting something or doing doing what I deem may be right or wrong? 
um, according to my philosophy. That's where you need to educate people and, and bring them along. You know, it's kind of like, you know, our deer co-op, you know, getting everybody on the bus, you know. Yep. We don't have to all agree that we're going to the same exact destination, but we're going in the same general direction. Get on the bus. Let's, oh, wow, man, your destination is a little better than mine. I think I'm going to go where he's going, you know? Uh, exactly. And if you get all in, in the one end of the bus, mm-hmm. you've, you've done a lot. Yeah. And, and, and Okay, so along with that picture, right, I'll go to the other extreme. Was a, it was a, he said it was a three-and-a-half-year-old buck. Mm-hmm. Nice. And he even said, look, I, I shot this three-and-a-half-old. He probably would have got better next year, but I shot him because I couldn't wait anymore. Uh, he's kind of making it not making excuses, right? But kind of justifying why he shot the deer. Yeah. To me, yeah. He said, "Well, you know, I, I'm hunting near heavy pressure. Uh, I've seen a deer a lot. I don't, you know." Yeah. To me, it was like uh, Bob Bridge says, "Be rating, be rating." That's that's the term you're looking for. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, be rating people is just um, yeah, it gets it gets old, and it's like right on. Come on, just we there's other means that we need to get together. And go after the laws, yeah. get those changed, and then everybody's happy. Now, if the DNR so chooses to get on board with certain aspects of, of helping and, and listening to the hunters, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's even better. That's even better. So we got to, you know, just like um, Jason Meekoff with his group. It, Backcountry hunters and anglers. You know, getting into the legislature, getting into those people and say, look, we need this. Yeah, do something about it. Be proactive. Right. So, no, that's my little... Uh, rant of the week that I, I saw that and i was like D- people stop okay the guy from, from what i could tell on the outside it was legally shot he was smiling and he's got food for the freezer okay can, I, can, I, can, I, can I stop ranting for the uh, you, you can you can stop no berate, more for the year you can stop berating the beraters <laughs> i don't know it just bugged me it's just i got you i understand man i understand save that enthusiasm we're coming back for the last segment All i got right. i i want to wrap the year up not by doing a year in review of what we've done this year, because we've done that in the past, and truthfully, everybody already knows kind of how things rolled this year. If, if you've been with us, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, so, and, and actually, um, I want to take us in a different direction. We, right. We didn't get Mara on today. Uh, she's off in Ohio. And, you know, she's on the other side of the border, so we don't kind of know what happened to her. Uh, <laughs> but we'll definitely have her on. Uh, one of the things I do want to do, uh, we want to do for next year, is get her on more often. Absolutely. Um, she and Cody. And Cody. Eh, Cody, not so much. <laughs> he, he can go fish. And the gnome. Oh, the gnome will be yeah, around. Yeah. Don't worry. So The gnome's got to pack his bags. Yeah. Well, so. listen, let's take our next break. Come back. We're going to wrap up the 2016 year with, uh, with a question to Danny and myself in uh, our take on it. So we'll be right back after this. The 2015 Dream Season Decree is a deadly combination of speed and precision. It's built for the moments when time stands still. When the only thing that will break the silence is an arrow slicing a clean path to the kill zone. The bow of your dreams is a nightmare for big game. This is PSE's decree. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that many states It's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older. As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families Afield program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters afield are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesafield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. back everybody last segment 2016 were it's... we framed up were we framed up okay on the screen i don't know you want me to check real yeah, quick check. for our facebook viewers I here because we gotta we have a, a right. pre-check and check all right i i don't know well, there we go see yeah i see me i don't see you or that i don't know if that's rolling if that's live i don't know let me check here real quick i gotta check on danny you know he just uh my computer's going wacky yeah i can all see right. you there there all you right. are that's all i wanted to ah. Side of your face. That's what they get to see. Great. We got to get the GoPro with the wide angle lens going. Yeah. Well, maybe next week. We'll we'll see. New Year's resolution for 2017. All right. Well, we are going to uh, 
pose a question here. I'm going to read. I'm going to read something that was posted on Facebook in regards to the outdoors, and I'm posing it as a question. Actually, I posed it as a question on our Facebook page. And this is from Donnie Vincent, your a, idol, a guy who I really admire uh, of the work he does in the outdoor industry as far as as uh, cinematography. The, the stuff that they put out is just well, incredible. not just cinematography. Um, Philo- his hunting philosophy. philosophy. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this in, in our in our show prep that um, we kind of compare him to. Uh, You've got Ted Nugent, the the outspoken, kind of the loud side of it. Where who promotes the outdoors. Who promotes the outdoors. Where you get Donnie Vincent, the quiet philosophy, does it a different way through photography. Kind of the yin and yang of the, the spectrum. There. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they accomplishing the same things in different ways. And I, and I bet you deep down, if it, kind of like a funnel, I bet you if you got those two guys together to talk, yeah. they would be very similar. Oh, I think so. Uh, almost uh, even on a spiritual type Ab- level. Absolutely. That's what I mean. You know? I mean, just that whole, okay, you know, Ted Nugent's all loud and this stuff over here, but Donnie Vincent's quiet, does his cinematography, throws out words and, and yep. stuff like this that you're going to read. But deep down, when nobody's around, these two guys probably could talk for hours on end. That absolutely. Are, yeah. It would be kind of interesting. Well, what he posted uh, is actually the first part of this is a quote from uh, Aldo Leupold. And he says he once wrote, the quote is, There are two spiritual dangers in not owning a farm. One is the danger of supposing that breakfast comes from the grocery and the other comes from that heat comes from the furnace. He later goes on to say, My dog does not care where heat comes from, but he cares ardently that it come and soon. And that's from all the loophole that he wrote. And then Donnie Vincent expands on this and he says, Long November nights in North Dakota have given me much time to reflect on my progression as a hunter. Hunting for me is my personal relationship with the land and wildlife. Aldo wanted us to understand that as the world becomes more and more mechanized, our understanding and relationship with the land is all we have left. If we lose this relationship, we're doomed as our wild places will hold no more value than to the casual. If you do not, if you do not hunt or fish or grow or gather, I urge you to take a look around and celebrate with the simplest of interaction, and never look down on those that choose to participate. That message goes to everybody from A to Z. I mean, yeah, from, from, from the tree from, hugger to PETA to the fur babies to... From one side of the fence to the other. Exactly. From the side we're on, where yep. we, we've, we've talked about this many a times, where we've sat out there and we've just looked around and said, wow. Yeah. And, and, and taking it all in. And and we and you're doing things by helping nature and regeneration with with cuttings. I want to do the same thing, uh, helping the environment to sustain itself, mm-hmm. not kill itself. And then the last part of that is reaching out to those the other side of the fence that says, "Hey, you choose not to do it. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, yep. Yep. But don't criticize the people across the fence. Yeah, because they don't think alike what you do. Yeah, but he, you know, he, even here he says. I urge you to take a look around and celebrate with the simplest of interaction. The simplest of interaction. Looking out that window right there and looking at nature from your, your house, no matter who you are, what you are. You know, taking a walk. Um, looking at the stars. The simplest of interaction. Be a part of nature because you are a part of nature whether you like it or not. It depends on how you interact with it and what you do with that interaction. And to me, and you, you got to hear kind of. But for me, because I can look out my back my backyard mm-hmm. and see the woods, mm-hmm. um, I don't know how many evenings uh, Deb and I have sat there after dinner. Yeah, Bob, I'll post that quote. Um, he just asked me, yeah, I'll post it. Um, just watching the woods. Yeah. Just whether it be a squirrel uh, or when I take the dogs for a walk. Um, I take them for a walk throughout the woods. Uh, we come walking through the woods. Uh, I'm, I'm deer hunting in my backyard, kind of. I can't, but I am, I'm with the dogs and finding out where the rubs are and seeing where the, the trails are. And I, right. I found a new rub, matter of fact, which is really exciting to me because it's right in the back of my house and it's new. So that tells me that... Everything's the, been shifted. The buck that the buck that I had in the Time backyard wise. is probably now alive. Right on. It, yeah, exactly. So, uh, But interaction, uh, and that's the simplest forms. And uh, that's right from your own home. Mm-hmm. Now, the people that um, have to go a little bit further, take a Sunday drive. 
Yeah. Yeah. Take a vacation. Take your vacation. Do something different. You know, you brought up a great point. Uh, Bob asked too if he could zoom out on the camera. Um, we're, we're interacting with Facebook people here as well on our podcast. Uh, so if you're listening and wondering what we're talking about, Bob, he's got his stinking camera that doesn't zoom out any further and it's against the wall. So and uh, it says it says it makes him look fat. And we're working on it. We're working on it. But uh, we got some ideas. Anyway, um, you mentioned something in in the break, or maybe it was our pre-show it was our, setup. It was our pre-show setup. Pre pre show shut up yeah set up. <laughs> I love talking to you. <laughs> pre show set, set up. up. There you go. Not that, shut up. Set up. You talking about somebody who you work with, and they're talking about going to oh yeah yeah, yeah. Texas, you know, oh, California, yeah. Florida, all these vacations, or out of the country. And you said, "Well, have you ever been north of the bridge?" I'm like, no. What's your own home state? Visit your own home state. God, you we've got so much to offer in this state alone. You know, it's just and, incredible. The whole, the, the whole premise was that what are you guys doing oh i'm gonna go out to colorado skiing I, i'm gonna go to florida mm-hmm. i'm gonna be here you've been above the bridge no well let me tell you what you're missing yeah and, and that's the whole point you know michigan you can drive for eight hours and still be in michigan absolutely if you drive eight hours south you're in three different states yep but it's like for those people you know go check out your own state mm-hmm. uh there's a lot to offer just going from one side to the other side. Absolutely. There's a lot to offer going from the south to the north. Um, but, yeah, it's like that interaction, and, and he does it, Donnie does it so well with, with video photography yeah. that just, it almost grabs you and wants to pull you out there. It sucks you into it. It's like you're right there. He draws the, and that's what I love about cinematography is it, it draws so much emotion out of you. I mean, you can watch something. It'll bring a tear to your eye. You know, or it'll make you smile. It, it, it gives you, you get that uh, that sudden adrenaline rush, you know. Uh, it's just, cinematography is really cool. It's just a great medium to be a part of. And, and it's a great medium to be a part of. And, you know, right on our own team, we've got somebody who's getting very, very good at it. Absolutely. She is knocking some socks off. Um, big shout out to Mara. Um, there's a story about that. We'll talk about that later. But she knows what we're talking about, and she did an awesome job. Absolutely. Yep. But. And more to come. And more to come. And look what they do. You know, she gets out hunting. They get out. I think there was a, a picture she posted of, of getting out rabbit hunting. Yep. yep. And, and, you know, and they do their fishing. So their interaction is a lot. Now for the people for the other side of the fence, you know, it, it, he's reaching out to them too. And that's kind of cool. You know, it's just like there was a the campaign. It's in my nature with Cabela's. Absolutely. You know, you think, oh, that's hunting and fishing. No. Nope. They're, they're reaching out to campers. They're reaching out to hikers, backpackers. Um, you know, all those different can, can, people who canoe or kayak, people who experience the outdoors or getting them to experience the outdoors. You know, you know the outdoor selfie, you know, looking at your reflection in the water. You know, it's... That was one of the number one things Deb and I, that's why she wanted to get into kayaking, was exactly for that. You know, we can fish from the shore all we want. Go over to the state park, throw a line in. But with the kayak, um, we kayaked the lakes. And then you can pick different places to go kayak. Right. Uh, she chose to do the um, Holly Fenton connection, which we're going to do again. I want to go with you guys on that. Oh, yes, you time. do. You want, yeah. She's going to guide you, and she's going to take us. And i got a personal guide. She will guide you through that section <laughs> like you won't believe. All right, Deb, I'm taking you up on that. So, uh, but no, that just one more thing to use and what she likes about it is it's her own space. Yeah. She's out there with her, with her kayak, with her fishing pole, with her paddle. Right. If she wants to go over there, she's going over there and And leave you over here. Right. Exactly. And you know, we boat launches over there. Right. You know, whether we choose to fish together or separately, we'll get there. But yeah. And well, looking at what he said, looking at it, at the statement he made. Yes. Looking back at 2016, and, and I'm not looking at a year in review. Nope, nope. What did you learn from 2016, or what experience did you have that you cherish or hold on dear to that you're going to take into 2017 and use to change something at the way you use or see or interact with the outdoors? One, at our camp, getting everybody on board to do our logging project. <laughs> ah, right on. Learn, yeah. Learning from you what you did. And finally, yeah. it, it's tough, it, man. It's, it's that bus thing, right? You get out. Yeah, it, it's it, tough. It, okay, so I want to get that I want to get that done, taken care of in the next year. I got to find out if everything's take, hanging that way. Mm-hmm. So that would be the hunting aspect. I want to get more, uh, maybe maybe getting some food pots put in. Okay. If they're crude, put in, they're crude. But if they're in, they're in. 
Okay. You know, um, learning. I will say this before. Look at QDMA's five five major steps to a, a good food plot. Right. They got really good answers in there, and it make it'll really make you think about because what you just said, crude food plot. Think. Just go go read that article. Look on QDMA's Facebook page because it, it really gives you some really good insight into not putting in just a food plot for the sake of putting in a food plot. Right. And another one besides QDMA is uh, Game Keepers by Mossy Oak. Absolutely. They have – that book is, is – when I read that, as the, I always pull something out of that. Uh, that's a good one to subscribe to if you don't already. Um, okay, so that's my hunting side of it. Now, uh, the fishing side of it, I, I kind of it, – it's with the kayaks. Getting those this year – Learning to what those can possess. Uh, talking with Adam Marsh uh, at Cabela's in the beginning of the year, the, what, what, exactly what he said. The bigger boats can't get into certain areas, and uh, learning to go after those areas. Okay. We did it up using at, the kayaks. Using the kayaks, we did it up north. Uh, we didn't have the, a big boat, so we had our kayaks. So we, you know, we kayaked to into the, some of these lakes. That uh, that was fun. Um, so those are the two things, and, and both environmentally uh, helping nature um i'm not taking a motor boat i'm taking my own self-propelledness mm-hmm. uh, but yeah definitely work in the land uh, it's been over 20 years since we had it last logged so it's time to help regenerate it and get that moving gotcha so that's kind of what i've uh, and for anybody that wants to you're a hunter i don't know no i'm not just a hunter i'm uh, if, if i'm logging and i'm planting kind of makes me a, a farmer mm-hmm so conservationist conservationist and, and like you said uh, i'm not raising my own chickens but uh being that thinking about uh, the hunting and the gathering and the farming and that all helping nature learning that that's probably what this year learning kind of learning from you how you're go, progressing with yours and then talking on my side getting everybody going pushing them on the bus mm-hmm. uh we already got the the focus but now we know how we have to get there and right. what the means we have to do to get there. Right, right. Gotcha. So, what about you? Wow. It's uh, how much time we got. <laughs> I've learned a lot this year. Um, I've got a lot. I've, I've, I've done a lot of reading, done, got a lot of experience from what I've done and learned from that and the things I'm taking forward. One thing I'm going to try different this year that, that I've been reading about going along with conservation and going along with, you know, habitat and interacting with animals and, and learning how to be a, bit, a better, more effective hunter. You talked about Mossy Oak Gamekeepers in the magazine. There's a really good article, and I can't remember which issue it was. Of It's a quarterly magazine, but talking about mock scrapes. And I talked with uh, a gentleman who used to be on the Northeastern Michigan chapter. He was on the board of the, that QDMA uh, chapter. And him and I, we've talked a lot this year. And that's the one thing that he uses effectively. I've got some of the tools to make it happen. I ran out of time this year to make it happen. If that makes sense. That's that's what happens when we have real jobs. Yeah. Well, that and the, you know we were doing the logging project, and and then we had the field plantings, and then I built the blind, and then all of a sudden, hey, it's the next weekend. It's season. You know, um, all that it it, it kind of caught up with me really quick. And that's the other thing is time management. Learning learning to manage my time, but learning to. to Figure out what projects need to be done, what what has to be done, and then what do I want to do, and, and using my time more effectively and productively of getting out in the field because I had my feet into or my toes in too many waters this year. You know, what I'm saying I was I was being pulled in multiple directions with the podcast, with what we do in the industry, um, working with Mossy Oak, working with Cabela's, working at work, working at the club, the hunting club, and and all that, and then working with the family, and then making sure I had time with the family, and making all that work together. It, it was. It really. It took a toll, but it taught me a lot of things this year. Um, but yeah, taking that. You know, that's the one thing I want to focus on this year. Is I want. To, I want to focus on trying to use mock scrapes and how does that all work and, and placement and things of that nature. Using the trail cameras along with that. Uh, land management. You know, I've learned a lot this year from our club manager. Has taught me a lot. Talking with the loggers has taught me a lot. Talking with the foresters. Learning. Uh, how this all works together and we're doing another forestry or logging project here in a couple of weeks and using that to help another section of our hunting air yep. our hunting club you know and taking that and helping the the three or four people that it's going to affect on that part of our property and how do we take what we've already done and start molding and shaping that into what we want it to be Instead of letting just nature take a hold of it and nature going okay here it is <laughs> we've got that opportunity now to take it and mold it 
and kind of guide it, you know, pu exactly. push it in a, in a direction that we, we want to be able to be used to be most effective for hunting and habitat for other animals. It's not just for deer, you know, how, how do we hold turkeys on the property? How do we hold rabbits or squirrels or other birds? You know, we, we've got uh, partridge up there, yep. grouse, what we call, you know, we call them partridge, but grouse. All, all those different aspects and, and using that to mold mold the land. And then taking taking that and working with the guys at our camp and, and trying to share hunting knowledge with people and getting them to, to understand some of the science behind what we do and why we do it and breaking down some of those traditions. I mean, we talked about it on the show many times. Traditions are some of the hardest things to overcome when you're trying to move forward, whether it be in a hunting camp, uh, a hunting group, or a hunting, uh, an outdoors club, or whatever, you know, or even a shooting range. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, is yeah. when you, in other things in life, I mean, Christmas. Well, we've always done this at Christmas. This is tradition. This, <laughs> this family does this. We put the tree up on Thanksgiving night, you know. Well, this year we're not. Oh, we can't have that. Oh yeah, I, I, I could do I could do you some stories with that. Well, we always have it at Christmas. Well, we're not having it this year. Yeah. Well, it's just even with hunting, you know. Oh, the, with hunting, it's even worse because. And the more people you well, got, the worse it gets. Well, we haven't done that in fifty years. Well, yeah. and there's a reason why you didn't see no deer. Yeah. I think you know you talked about getting your camp involved in this land management project of, of logging and forestry and getting people to understand that those are some of the hardest things to overcome and getting people to understand the knowledge that you, that you've got, that you, you've learned and showing people there's another way to do things. That's going to, it's going to be better um, in breaking down those traditions and, and teaching people things. And, you know, it's like I say, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks sometimes. It is. And I think I got, I think we have a bus driver and I think I have everybody on the bus. I just got to make sure everybody handed in their tickets. <laughs> right on. That's a great point. Because you can it, say you want to go, but do you really want to go? Right, exactly. And, and yeah. that's, uh, I, I got to talk with our forester. I, I got to make sure, because of how we're all set up up there, that everybody handed in their paperwork. Gotcha. And, and that's their ticket. Once once we get it all handed in, you're ready to go. Then it's the bus can leave. He can start pushing the gas pedal on the bus and, and start lining us up to get this stuff done, which uh, I want to email him, which reminded me. So, but. As far as a year in review, mm -hmm. I think shortly we had a good year. I think so. I did. I, I had a successful year. And that I, doesn't mean putting meat in the freezer. No, 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 no. I think we did okay. Um, next year will be your 10th year come April. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be our 400th show mm -hmm. come February. So 2017 is looking to be a very... Another busy year. Busy year. <laughs> We're, we're oh. already, we've already got some weekends booked at Cabela's. We got, okay. Benefit for St kids coming stop up. Stop Start at the beginning. ATA. ATA. We're going to be at ATA in two weeks. Two weeks. Less than two weeks Less now. than two. In two weeks, we'll be home from ATA. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, then we got benefit for kids. Yep. I got the tickets. We're all set. Uh, Cabela's has already asked us, uh, reaching out to March. Yep. Through March. Uh, through March. Uh, so right there, we're, 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 we're setting up to be busy. And then from there on, um, turkey season. <laughs> well, fishing season. In between you those some three, ice fishing. there's some ice fishing we need to get done in there. Yeah, because I would like to get out on the ice, at least drown some waxworms or something. Right on. We seem not to catch a lot of fish when we go. No, unless we go up to your uh, to your pond, which is dunk, 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 yeah, dunk, that's dunk. that's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> one after the other. And you know, I tell you the truth, if we could find one of those automatic scaler things, that'd be we could do a fish fry. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, 2017, 2016, we've learned a lot. We had a good year. Um, shout outs to our families for putting up with us. Absolutely. Uh, my wife has been an angel. She's um, She lets you come over here every week. She lets me come over here every week. Uh, and my wife lets you walk through the door every and week. She, yeah. <laughs> and puts up with me being in here every week. And uh, you know what? And, and by gosh, we, we got in kayaks this year. She will guide you from Holly to Fenton next year. Uh, I'm doing this live, so. Deb, she, I count on it. <laughs> So, she's watching. That's right. She's watching, and uh, she's gonna she's gonna be the guide for that trip for you. Um, I take it that's probably the angry sign that we got right there. <laughs> it's probably her. Could be. <laughs> you want me to check, <laughs> or should I not? Yeah, check. Why not? Right. Uh, somebody from up north. It just says up north journal. I think that'd be Mara. 
Mara's mad about something. Oh, I know why. Yeah, I know why she's mad. Yep. Um, but no, shout out to the families for 2016 for putting up with us, uh, putting up with what we do. Uh, and, and it's just one of those things that it, and it's family. It's family driven. I've taken my kids up. Uh, we take the family up to the cabin. You do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, on to 2017. On to 2017. Folks, those of you who put up with us this year, we appreciate it. We, we love hearing feedback from you guys and our listeners and our, our viewers here on Facebook and Periscope when we're on Periscope Yeah, we're, and out at the shows. We're gonna, we're, Bob, we're going to try to get it working where we can do this every week so we can get the wide-angle lens. Yep. Yeah, we got some plans for that, so stay tuned on that. Uh, if you guys, you and Jay Gnome, this guy's going to be rocking with us this year. We've got a contest coming up. We don't have all the particulars yet. He needs a name, okay? That's all we're going to say right now. So start thinking about that and getting, uh, we want a, uh, a name for the guy. And, you know, other than that, just thanks for all your support, all you guys' love and, and uh, feedback and information you give us and comments, the whole nine yards. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, we're on all those as well. So, you know, check us out. Uh, Google Plus, I think we're over there as well. I don't, yeah, we are. I don't play in that playground a lot but that's something else i want to we're going to expand some things so just uh make sure you go over and give all of our sponsors and supporters some link love go check out their websites if you got anything that you're looking at i know uh we had a a gentleman that's uh contemplating buying new bow Uh, i was talking with him last night on facebook back and forth uh robert ford and uh he's looking for new psc so we're we're pushing him uh uh to the, the right psc model that he's looking for he's in our area right yeah yeah he lives here close yep Should yep go hey, right right. Over, great go right over to mr beasley well actually he's looking at one at cabela's that they're they're clearance now oh. so cabela's is running a clearance on uh on their 2016 models making room for 2017 absolutely which we're going to be at ata checking out so if there's anything you guys want us to look at at ata by the time you listen to this show make sure you get it to us quick shoot us a private message email what have you and if we can we'll stop by and we'll uh we're going to try to do some live stuff over there if we can don't know <laughs> if the bandwidth will allow it uh, i tell you what it, it's it gets pretty busy but we will uh try to make sure and stop at booths and check some stuff out for you so and uh just be safe out there 2016 is in the rear view mirror now 2017 look ahead shoot straight be safe we'll see you next week this episode was brought to you by pse archery black eagle arrows cabela's antler action spot shooter archery tom's custom turkey calls family traditions tree stands and badass slingshots thanks for listening and join us again here next week until then remember as we always like to say if you're out on the water or in the woods shoot straight and be safe until next week on the up north journal